Good morning, good afternoon, or good night. And welcome to another episode of Command Power, the show in which we discuss all things Magic the Gathering with a focus on Commander. And today we are going to be doing a deck tech on one of the coolest new commanders from Dominaria United, which is Zur, Eternal Schemer. Now let's quickly go over what Zur does. He basically is going to grant keyword soup to all of your enchantment creatures. He's gonna give them Death Touch, Lifelink, and Hexproof. These are all really solid and give us a few ways to build around. We can kind of build around life gain synergies or around death touch synergies or a little bit around both. What most people have been building around his second ability which is going to let us permanently turn enchantments into enchantment creatures. I think that's cool but it's a bit done and I've seen like a lot of the combos with it. It's not really my kind of style so instead what we're going to be focusing on is a deck based around various sagas from Kamigawa that turn into enchantment creatures and many of the creatures from Theros which are already enchantment creatures to begin with. So that's kind of what we're going to be going for. We're going to just go for the keywords part of it and kind of build an aggro deck based around that. Looks pretty fun and without further ado let's jump into it. And we're starting with Agent of Erebos. It's a nice little bit of graveyard hate and it's an enchantment creature so of course it's going to have lifelink, death touch and hexproof. Pretty solid. Archetype of Courage is another enchantment creature and it's particularly good in this deck because it's going to give all of our creatures first strike which works really well with death touch of course and all of our opponent's creatures are going to lose first strike so we're basically going to be winning any fight when this is in play. Archetype of Imagination is one of our finishes of choice. It's going to let all of our creatures fly over and hit the opponent's creatures since they're all going to lose flying. And since it has Hexproof, it's going to be very difficult for the opponent to remove this. Archon of Sun's Grace is a nice one to keep the stream of attackers coming. It's going to make a 2-2 flyer every time we play an enchantment. This deck is chock full of enchantments, so this is going to be fantastic here. Athreos, God of Passage is a nice one. We've got a few gods in here. This one is not super super essential if you don't have it, so if you want to substitute it for another enchantment creature, feel absolutely free. That being said, it's quite nice. It puts a bit of pressure on the opponents when we're beating down late game. It's very difficult for them to pay the three life every time something dies, so you're going to be able to either hit them for a bunch of life or recur some of your creatures. We're fine with both of those. Brain Maggot gives us a nice little bit of interaction. This card is usually not very good because it's so easily removed. However, in this deck, it has Hexproof, so they're not going to really be able to kill it very easily by board wipes so it's actually a nice bit of interaction you can kind of take one of your opponent's board wipes if you're ahead and stop them from removing your stuff Next up is Celestial Ancient, which is good in a lot of enchantment decks, but in this deck it's better than in most, because every single enchantment you're playing is going to buff your team. You're playing an aggro attacking deck, so this is exactly what you want to be doing, and also your team is going to be lifelinking for even more with this. Just a great card in this deck. Daxos, Blessed by the Sun, is a nice little enchantment creature. It's going to gain us life whenever one of our creatures enters the battlefield or dies. That's a nice little bonus, and it's going to have a quite decent amount of toughness in this deck, so just a good little beater. Doxa Chef has Hexproofs so is very difficult to deal with in this deck and it's going to be letting us trade in our little tokens or anything we don't need for cards. Just a good card to always have around. It bears mentioning that in this deck even little 1-2s are kind of annoying for our opponents because they all have death touch. It's going to make it very difficult for them to attack into you since you're totally fine trading your 1-2 for something really big of theirs. Doomwake Giant is going to cause absolute wrecks on the opponent's boards because it's going to give them minus one, minus one whenever you play an enchantment and we have a ton of those. We can also make enchantment creature tokens with Heliod, so this is going to be an absolute beating and one of the best cards in the deck. Eidolon of Countless Battles is great either for the bestow cost or for the regular cost. We can just play it as a 3-drop and it's going to be relatively big. However, it's much better for bestow because it gives us a little bit of protection from board wipes. Ephora God of the Polis is going to keep the cards flowing. Usually it's just going to draw us one extra card during the next opponent's step, but this does trigger at every end step. So if we have something like Lane Line of Anticipation in play, which we're playing in this deck, we can play creatures during each opponent's turns and we can draw three or four cards per turn cycle, which is really Really fantastic singer she's very difficult to remove. One thing worth mentioning is in this deck once the gods requirements are turned on they have hexproof and indestructible so they're all going to be an absolute pain for our opponents to deal with. Erebos Bleak Hearted is another god it's just great because of the indestructible and the hexproof but also it's going to let us draw cards whenever some of our creatures die. We're pretty happy to pay the two life in this deck since everything we play has lifelink. Fantastic card in the deck. Erebos God of the Dead is good for all of the same reasons. We can just dump any two extra mana we 
have and pay two life, which we're happy to pay to draw a card. It also turns off any of our opponent's life gain, which is nice since we're an aggro deck. Grim Guardian just gives us a bit of reach. Every time an enchantment comes into play, each opponent is gonna lose one life. Perfect in this deck. Heliod, God of the Sun, is a really, really strong card in the deck. Since we have a bunch of constellation abilities, making two one enchantment creatures at instant speed is really good. Those enchantment creatures also get the keyword soup, so they all have lifelink, hexproof, and death touch. This is one of the best cards in the deck. Herald of Torment is a bit of a filler card. You can replace it with something else. It's just a nice beater for three mana. The one life we lose is not that important since we're going to be able to immediately get it back with the lifelink. It's also good to bestow because it gives us a little bit of board wipe protection. Mesa Enchantress is fantastic in this deck. It's the only real Enchantress effect we can run because it's the only one in mono white. And it's going to draw us a card every time we play an enchantment. So that's all we want. Moon Circuit Hacker is an enchantment creature. It's a really spicy one. It can let us rebuy one of our Enter the Battlefield effects. And it also is going to draw us a card the first time it connects. In future turns, it's also pretty likely to connect because it has Death Touch. So if we attack somebody that doesn't have Chump Tokens, they're going to be very reticent to block. And if it connects, we're going to draw a card and discard a card. If it doesn't, it's always going to trade one for one with something so fantastic in the deck. Nightcrawler is going to give one of the creatures a big buff in the late game. This can be absolutely huge, particularly with lifelink. Bestowing is, as usual, very good because it gives board white protection, but this is good for either mode. Nykthos Paragon is a card I've been trying to find a spot for in many decks, and this is the perfect shell for it. Since we're gaining life in really big chunks because of all of our lifelink, we can then just put a bunch of counters on all our creatures, which are then going to gain us even more life in future turns. So this snowballs out of hand really quick. And the fact that it has hexproof makes it really awkward for the opponent to remove. Just so good in this deck. Shimmerwing Chimera lets us rebuy some of our Enters the Battlefield abilities and lets us rebuy some of our Constellation effects by returning an enchantment to our hand at the beginning of our upkeep. We don't have to do it, that's why we're not running Riptide Chimera, which is also good, but sometimes it can be a bit awkward if you don't have something you want to return. Spirited Companion is one of the good cards to return because when it enters the battlefield, it's going to draw a card. We're just including it for that alone and because it's super cute and an enchantment creature to boot. Starfield Mystic is going to make all of our enchantments cheaper. That's something we're totally up for. And then it's also going to grow every time one of our enchantments dies. This is really good with Heliod and with a bunch of other cards in the deck. Sun Titan is something that should be in most white decks. It's some nice recursion. We have a lot of cheap things that we are pretty happy to get back onto the battlefield with this. Sunblade Samurai is surprisingly good in the deck. It's a 4-4 with Vigilance for 5. That's not great, but when you add Lifeling, Hexproof, and Death Touch, that becomes quite decent. But also it has another mode where we can just discard it to search up a basic planes. That can be very nice if we're mana screwed, and it also lets us fill up our graveyard for some of the recursion that we have in the deck. Tameshi Reality Architect, it's a nice little bit of recursion and card draw. We're going to be able to return a land to our hand in order to return an enchantment or artifact from the graveyard to play. That is very good in this deck and not much to say here. Thassa Deep Dwelling is going to, again, let us rebuy some Enter the Battlefield abilities. It's going to let us rebuy Constellation effects and it's also a god that can tap potential blockers to let our aggro creatures get through. Thassa God of the Sea is similarly good. It's going to improve our draws by scrying every turn and then the activated ability can make one of our creatures unblockable this turn, which is really good to push through damage since we're an aggro deck. Next up is Timuret Chosen from Death. It's a pretty solid beater. It's difficult to remove with a high toughness, and it also is some graveyard hate. It's all things we want in this tech. Underworld Coinsmith is a nice little bit of reach. It's going to gain us some life every time an enchantment comes into play, and then we can dump mana into it late game since we have a bunch of life to make each opponent lose a life. Whitewater Nyads is one of our ways to close out games. It's going to make one of our creatures unblockable so we can push through a little bit of damage. Zer the Enchanter is really nice because it can search up any enchantment and put it straight onto the battlefield. In this deck, that means it can search up a bunch of creatures as well, which is really awesome. Obviously, we have Necropotence is there too, so that's the classic combo, but yeah, pretty solid card. Moving on to our enchantments, we have Behold the Unspeakable. This is awesome. It's going to make all of our opponent's creatures smaller for a turn. Then we're going to draw a bunch of cards, and finally, it's going to be a massive beater, and it's just everything we want in this deck. Era of Enlightenment is a nice little two-drop. It's going to scry again. It's like a couple of life, and then we have a nice first striker, which works really well with Death Touch. Inventive Iteration is going to give us a little bit of bounce, so a little bit of board control with that. Then we can either draw a card or return an artifact from our graveyard to hand. We're usually going to draw a card. And then finally, it's kind of an annoying little beater on the other side that's going to make it difficult for our opponents to cast spells. Pretty solid card. Leyland of Anticipation is sweet in this deck. Obviously, it's nice to be able to cast creatures at instant speed, but in this deck, this is also basically a free creature. If we get it in our opening hand, by the time we play Xur on turn three and then activate it on turn four, we can start hitting with a 4-4. That's nothing to sneeze at. 
Michiko's Reign of Truth provides a bunch of damage in this deck because most of our deck is enchantments. And then when it flips, it's a huge creature in its own right. So just really, really good in this deck. Necropotence is always good, but in this deck it's even better because we can give it Hexproof when they try to remove it. Do be aware though that if you give it Hexproof, it permanently turns into a creature, so then it's vulnerable to board wipes. That being said, this card just fits so well, it's impossible not to include it. If you don't have it though, replace it for something else that can draw your card. Something like Greed is almost as good in this deck because you have so much life. Sanguine Bond is really good in this deck. Every time we gain life, an opponent is going to lose that much life, and we're gaining life all over the place in this deck because everything has life link, so this is going to be a great great finisher in here. Sigil of the Empty Throne is going to keep the beat down coming. Every time we play an enchantment, we're going to get a 4-4 Angel. I'm all for that. Sphere of Safety gives us a little bit of protection from the crackback. Though our life total being super high is probably enough, we are still a little bit scared of Voltron strategies. This is going to make it very difficult for them to attack us without dumping like 10 mana into it for each creature. Teleportation Circle is just another way to rebuy and to the battlefield abilities. This one in particular is good in this deck because we can also make it into a creature, thus giving it hexproof and making it hard to remove. The Fall of Condor is pretty nice. It's going to exile a creature with mana four or greater. That's great. Regaining control of all permanents can come up in certain situations, but probably not very often. But then on the flip side, it's a 1-3 really annoying creature because it has death touch that if it gets removed, we draw a card. The Restoration of a Ganjo provides a nice little bit of value. We can search up a plane when it first comes into play and then we can get a bit of recursion going if we have something small in the graveyard and then finally we get a really nice beater that's going to make one ones every time it attacks or blocks and it's still an enchantment creature for sorceries we have brilliant restoration to get everything back from our graveyard onto the battlefield really awesome in an enchantment deck and we might even have some artifacts in there too dam is just a really flexible piece of removal that can deal with a single threat or the entire board dance of the mantis is a really good one it's going to reanimate a lot of enchantments from our graveyard and if we sink enough mana into it it's going to animate all of them and for many of our enchantment creatures making them 4-4s four is an upgrade so this is really really fantastic extinguish all hope is basically a one-sided board wipe do be aware that it does hit Zer, so you'll probably have to recast him if he's in play when you play this and then for artifacts we have these mana rocks there's nothing much to say about them we need mana rocks in every deck and these ones are the best ones that we have access to then we have Biden of Thassa. It's really good because we're interested in attacking in this deck, so it's going to draw us a bunch of cards. It can also force our opponent's creatures to attack, which is really nice. Since we have a bunch of death touches, they're probably not going to attack into us. We can also make it into a creature in a pinch with Zer to blank removal, so it's really nice. And then Thornbite Staff is really good. If it's out of your budget, there is a good replacement, which is Viridian Longbow. I think this is slightly better because it untaps the creature, so it's a little bit cheaper on average. But that being said, they're both really good. Being able to tap to kill one of our opponent's creatures with other death touches is fantastic. And if you put this on one of your creatures, it basically gains destroy a creature for two mana. Seeing as the creature that it equips is going to have hexproof, it's going to be really, really difficult to interact with this. Fantastic card in the deck. Cyclonic Rift is a nice little bit of catch or removal. Very expensive, but you can replace it with any other kind of board wipe. Swan Song gives us a little bit of protection for one mana. A cheaper option is an offer you can't refuse. Teferi's Protection is difficult to replace but there are kind of a few things that give indestructible it's just a little bit better than those because it can protect you in other situations too but if you want a budget option anything that gives all of your board indestructible is great in this deck void rend is a nice little new addition from nuka penna which is going to give us a really good piece of catch or removal and finally, moving on to the lands, we have Bajuka Bog to deal with graveyards. We have Hall of Heliod's Generosity to return our enchantments to the top of our library so we can draw them again and play them again. We have Malakir Maya for a little bit of protection for Zur because we do rely on him quite a bit in this deck. And Tectonic Edge to deal with those pesky lands that our opponents might be playing. So I'm really excited to play with this deck. I've sleeved it up and I'm going to play it this weekend. I hope that it's going to play as well that it seems like it will in my head. Please let me know what you thought about the deck tech. Is there anything you would change or a different way you would build Zer? Let me know in the comments below. I read all of the comments and respond to all of them. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like or subscribe. It really helps the channel and we're growing right now. And until next time, take care.